Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to Interstage Window, our stream that we do on Saturdays starting at noon. That's a conversation with um, me and some of my friends. So today we have um, our usual and a guest. So um, Landon, why don't you go ahead and say hey, and then we'll have our guest introduce herself or themselves. Hi. Sorry, I'm still getting used to that. Oh gosh. Hello. <laughs> How is everybody? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Thanks for asking. No, <laughs> Um, it's your favorite omniscient voice in the background, Miss Landon. Yes. And who else do we have with us today? Introduce yourself, please. Well, goodness gracious, everybody. I'm Thumper. I'm the weird, low-voiced one that likes to lurk in the shadows and make bad jokes. <gasps> it's my <laughs> bunny rabbit. <gasps> yes. You are like the actual bunny. I know I wear the bunny hat, but Thumper, you're the actual bunny rabbit, so... <laughs> I, I'm I'm your bunny friend, which makes it okay for you to wear the bunny hat. Yes, thank you for I, giving me bunny permission. <laughs> I enjoy the bunny hat too. Mm, thank you. I really like it. Well, I have to tell you guys that one of the ears broke, so only one ear goes up now. So I'm just kind of like a sad little you're gimp a bunny. You're one-eared rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> you're the you're just the one ear up rabbit. Like <laughs> the lopping happens several days after birth, uh, where they actually fall down. So like you're just the one ear up. Oh, okay. So I'm like a sometimes, teenager rabbit. Like sometimes it doesn't happen completely correctly where one ear will be up and one ear will flop down. So like this is not entirely like a broken bunny. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Cause I was thinking like, you know, with a dog, like when their ears fall down, I was like, oh, my other ear must have a bunch of hematomas. But like your explanation is way cuter. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's yeah. like you found the Ravenclaw. Uh... <laughs> yeah, but it's the, the development of the lopping is like a change in, I think, the cartilage. Sometimes it just doesn't happen and oh. that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, this was a lovely bunny fact. Um, but uh, but I, I want to introduce our topic just a little bit because uh, to today we are here to talk about gender. So let's talk about gender, baby, with Thumper and Landon and me. <laughs> let's talk about all the girls and all the boys and everyone in between. Let's talk about gender. Okay, Landon, now you can do your actual introduction. No, wait. <laughs> I loved that. Can we please get a downloadable version of that? Mm. Please and thank you. Patreon, Patreon uh, perks looking at you. <laughs> okay, I'll clip it out for you guys um, at the end of the stream when I'm going to edit it to put it on YouTube. We'll clip that out. <clears throat> oh my God. <sighs> and maybe I should do that more because that happens to me all the time where just we change the words of songs. It's like a game me and Levi play. I love that so much. <laughs> All right, Miss uh, Karen Terry, what is your favorite thing of the week? Oh, okay. Yes. Let me oh, get... wait. No, let me just because, yeah, we talked about gender. So then yes. we're going to be talking about gender. That's pretty self explanatory. So, yes, favorite things. Okay. Okay. We can go right to favorite things. Um, okay. So, oh, let me test something real quick. I want to make sure the chat. Okay. The chat's not broken. I thought for a second the chat was broken, but it's not. Okay. Favorite things this week. Okay, so I don't really know yet if this is my favorite thing, but I want to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do for favorite things. So for me, this week, it is WandaVision. Okay, I am so, so excited about this show. It The first two episodes dropped last night, so of course I freaking watched it. And um, I don't know necessarily yet if I like it. They really don't get into too much of what's going to end up happening in the first two episodes is the truth. But it's like, it's basically like riffing on sitcom tropes. So if you are a huge WandaVision fan like I am, or you enjoyed sitcoms, like you've watched a lot of Nick at Night sitcoms, then um, I would recommend it. And I, I think also what it's, I think what it's building up to, like you don't, we don't know yet, but I think what it's building up to is some like, the suburbs are dangerous David Lynch shit. So I think I'm gonna end up liking it after a few more episodes, but right now I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, I'm unsure. Um, so that's, that's, I wanted to talk about that because I just love WandaVision so much. I wanted to say that for my favorite thing. Have either of y'all watched it? No, but I'm not, I'm not a huge, no. I'm not a huge uh, WandaVision fan. So. Oh, for shame. I know, <laughs> I'm disappointing like that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm the same way. It just it just doesn't do it for me. I'm here for 
I, I'm here for everything Stucky related, and if it doesn't have to do with Stucky, I've lost interest. Oh well, you'll have to tell me then if the um, if the Bucky and Falcon show is good, because I'm sure there's going to be some Stucky or Stucky esque things in that. I mean, there has to be, right? Well, after what they did with Steve, I don't know if they're going to go that direction. Uh, because you don't want to have their kind of hopes. Oh, I'm... I think it's safer that way for everybody involved, but also, <laughs> um, I just I just have a feeling that if they did, it would be mad disrespectful. So I would almost rather that they not even acknowledge that Steve existed ever. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, I can respect that opinion. I understand. I mean, I've definitely had my, my ship ruined by canon trying to do what they think the fans want, and then they totally just screw it all up. And I'm like, this is not what I asked for. Um, this is actually garbage. Thank you. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still in. Su I'm I'm still in super hell for fruits derogatory. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, that was that was my favorite thing. I guess um, Thumper, if you want to go next for favorite things this week, if you didn't have one, that's okay. But if you if you thought of a favorite thing, we would love to hear it. My favorite thing this week is, uh, uh, gosh, I have two that I'm trying to choose between, but uh, I'm going to go with the uh, more obvious one is I started at my official full-time employee job this week, which is very exciting. For the last uh, approximate year, I've been working as a contractor at a biopharmaceutical company, and then finally I got converted to full-time, so I now enjoy all of the benefits, including getting weird care packages sent to me, and I can finally be on site without a babysitter which makes me particularly happy because it's really annoying to have to be like hi i have a lab test to do at 5 30 in the morning and i need somebody to babysit me and i have to have somebody be there to essentially just babysit me as i've said like probably four times now but it did genuinely feel a little infantilizing <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh can we can somebody um can we get an applause for thumper in the chat can somebody spend um spend their uh their little channel. Their oh, I thought agents. you meant. I thought you meant. Oh, I mean, we can. Yeah, we can. We can applause. Yeah, but if we could get the sound thank effect you, too. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh my Even though we can't hear it in the Discord chat, but it's fine. Okay. Well, it happened. I promise it happened. <laughs> Everybody else heard it. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you, Thumper. Really, that's amazing. Because I know you really liked that job, so I'm really glad that it worked out and you were able to kind of stay there. I love money so much. I make <laughs> more than twice what I was before, and I'm very happy about that. We love that. Get that bread. That is so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I will secure the bag. I will secure the bag. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Your favorite thing then, Landon? I have decided that apparently I'm just becoming a book promoter. That's what I'm doing in my life right sure. now, as far as these dreams go. And I have a feeling that'll continue, especially if I continue on my education, that I'm just like, here are books to read. Um, so I discovered this book on Tuesday night, which is really, or was it Tuesday night? I don't know. It was really unfortunate because I was like, this will be interesting. And then I read the whole thing in three hours and didn't move. Oh, um, what a beautiful feeling, though. It, oh, God, it was such a good book. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. And when I tell you, like, okay, so there is this idea in another book called The Fault in Our Stars that, that the main character describes a book that just you love a book so much that you have to tell everybody about it because it has become, an, like, you can feel the shift within yourself when you were reading this book. And for me, uh, We Were Liars did that. Like I was reading it and I was just like, holy shit, like I'm reading it and I'm going through something. Oh. Um, and it was so good and it's fantastic. It's beautifully written. It is technically a YA novel. However, the, it's, it's very realistic fiction um, and very much set in this world. But the way that the prose was written, it's almost like poetry mixed with, uh, fiction writing and it was just it's just gorgeous um and of course like i discovered it on tiktok <laughs> 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 because it was like this book where else do you like, learn about things now 
nowhere. I, really was. <laughs> um, but they're like, oh yeah, no, this book is a challenge because literally on the back it says read it, and if anyone asks you how it ends, just lie. And she's like, so oh. I'm gonna read it for you, and so she takes you through part by part, and you watch as she just dies inside, but also goes through a beautiful metamorphosis. And um, having no idea, giving not being privy to any anything that is happening, but it is this really just interesting, beautiful uh, emotional roller coaster that I went through, and that I want everybody to go through. So please, 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 if you need a book and you need to like a good cry, but also a life changing moment, We Were the Liars is a wonderful book. Oh my gosh, I love what an endorsement. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, what a, what a what a good book. Um, I, I, I might have to check it out. You know, I'm a very slow reader, so we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, that sounds so good. I'm like really intrigued myself. <laughs> um, somebody still has their discord bong bong noise on. Yeah, that was so, me. I'm okay. Sorry. That's fine. Um, if you were able to fix that, that would be awesome. If not, no worries. Just nobody DM Landon or DM yeah. her a bunch and interrupt the stream. That'd be funny too. <laughs> Go ahead. It was all you. <laughs> and hey, Jane. Um, how are you doing hey. today? So happy to see you. Jane, my beautiful, the, the person who like flirts with me now every morning, I'm waking up to flirtatious uh, requests from her and it's <laughs> making my life. It just makes my life. So I, it's for Love context. the NSFW channel requests. Oh. <laughs> yeah, for context, we have like a contact the mods channel inside the role play, right? So anytime that we need to, to make new channels in, in Discord for people to role play and you have to ask because unfortunately, I can't give people the rights to just make their own channels because that also gives them the rights to delete them. Freaking Discord, it's so annoying. I wish those were separate rights, but they're not. So instead, they have to ask. And, uh, and uh, Jane has been peppering her asks with um, Koi flirtations uh towards landon and sometimes not so coy and they're uh, I, they're really amusing <laughs> listen, if you ever need me to get if, wow okay cat if you ever uh need me to do something flirtation is apparently flattery and just saying that i have wicked cute eyeliner is the way to get me to do it apparently <laughs> I'm, I'm a sucker that way <laughs> it's awesome though it's really funny to read um i like it <clears throat> but yeah I am trying to figure out how to stop my thing from making sounds, but you know what? We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Mine does it automatically because um, I, I have it in streamer mode because I have the um, Streamlabs running. But you might that be able to go into your settings and find streamer mode and manually turn yeah. it on. We're good. Okay. All right. So shall we start? Yes. How do we want to get started? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should talk about, well, I think that we should also, like, introduce ourselves as our opinions, but not necessarily opinions, but experiences with gender. Okay. And what that is like. So do you want to take it away? Yes. So I can go first with that. So um, I have had some very interesting gender experiences in my life. And this is where the, the sort of gender reveal party comes in, right? <laughs> Um, so I, I have to say, you know, I, I was assigned female at birth. I do see myself as a cis female, but um, that's not really how everyone sees me. And I've had some experiences in my life that kind of show me that in one way or another. But we're going to start at the beginning first. So the very first time that I ever noticed or recognized that there was maybe something a little bit different with my gender that was more than just like a tomboy phase that some people go through is, um, you know, you guys know I started role playing like super, super young. I've talked about that on the stream before. But within my teenage years, or I guess I was around 14 or 15 or so, in addition to like some of the regular like fandom role plays and, and uh, cat girl, you know, OC role plays that I was doing, I discovered Yaoi. Oh my gosh. Yes, I think so. And um, and I discovered that as a teenager and it sort of just like opened this whole door to me like, oh, oh, I could role play guys too in this space that doesn't feel like super intimidating because, you know, everyone here is is very respectful. There's a lot of women in this space. You know, there is a lot of like teenagers that are basically just like me like that's how it felt right and um it was very eye-opening for me it was a very eye-opening experience 
So I started out as most people do in in Yaoi roleplay, wanting to play like you know the the um, Uki character, right? Um, I don't even know if I'm saying that right because I don't think I've ever actually said that word aloud yeah. until this moment. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, the, yeah. The E is, is an A sound. Uh, yeah, you're right. It would be an E sound. Okay. So that's what I did at first, as most people do. But I very quickly learned that if I was willing to get good at playing the semi character, right, like the top character, I could get a lot of attention and everyone wanted to be my friend. Yep. <laughs> This is still true in gay circles. Oh, yeah, it's still true. This is still true. This isn't like something that's really changed. Um, but man, as a as like a, a middle school, early high school teenager, teenager, I was all over that. I was like, oh my god, yes, please. I love this. And I spent years basically playing that exact character type in one way or another, fandom and OC circles just over and over and over. Like I, I did it to the point where I would get so frustrated at always having to drive the story that for a couple, for several years after, like I swore it off and I said, I'm never, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing any more Yaoi role plays because I always end up playing the top character and I always end up driving the story and the other person refuses to do anything and I hate it. <laughs> like that's how much I did it. I burned myself out like the, to that degree but it that was that was my very first clue right that there's something else and I never I never experienced during school anybody thinking of me as anything but just like one of the weird kids right like I was in band I was in theater I never had anyone you know think that I wasn't a girl or treat me like I wasn't a girl they just treated me like one of the weird kids you know what I mean so it never occurred to me that there was anything off about my gender yet i was super freaking into yaoi right um and i want to get on my soapbox here for a minute so i'm going to deviate from the story i'm going to get on my soapbox here oh, for a minute you love a good soapbox you will see Open up. yeah mm -hmm. so we're gonna this is my tea about the yaoi fandom right you will see online mm. people saying things like all yaoi fans all fujoshi are straight cis you know white sometimes they'll say white to women yeah. Let me tell you what, the only reason, if anybody's saying that, they're either super misinformed and don't know what they're talking about, or the only reason they think that is because they are also 15, like I was when I was getting into it, right? And yes, at the time, everyone else I was in this fandom with was, a, you know, a straight cis woman. But <laughs> as we have grown up, it has become very clear that that is not the case. You know, so many people as they get older, I think that are that are into that stuff end up being, you know, queer in some way, right? Either they end up being a trans man, or they end up being gay or bisexual, or they end up being non-binary, right? And like, I'm 34 now. And I can say when I look at everybody that I know that that either self identifies as a Fujoshi or is into, you know, yaoi and that type of stuff, it's not a lot of, you know, straight, cis, very typical women, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so when somebody says that, my reaction is usually, no, everyone you know is like that because you're like 15. Once you're 34, that will not be the case anymore, I promise you. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you so much for the gift subs, Lunar. Naomi, you have a sub now. No more commercials for you. <laughs> Uh, Lunar, you've gifted so many. You're so generous. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Yes. So so that's kind of the first part of my gender journey. I don't know if you guys wanted to talk a little bit more about Yaoi or if you guys had experiences with that type of stuff before I get into part two of it. But that's kind of the part, that's the part one of my gender journey. Um, so I wanted to pause there and ask that if you guys did. I definitely, I yeah, I mean, like I said, what I feel like what teenage... <laughs> assigned women at birth did not have a yaoi moment in uh, <laughs> in their teenage years. I don't know. Um, I didn't. Okay, well, well we found one. <laughs> <laughs> I found the answer to that question. <clears throat> um, but mine, I mean, I think mine was more of a um, yeah, an expression of gender, but also uh, an expression of sexuality. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it was my first real insight into queer relationships. Um, and being able to uh, explore those dynamics. And so that was, for me, what it was more about necessarily than um, 
than gender identity. But I'm sure that they play a part into each other. And we'll talk about that when we get to my story a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I think that's valid. And I definitely know people that were big, like Fujoshi, that now today it's not that anything has happened with their gender. It's totally more about like, well, it turns out that's because they're a lesbian, you know? And and this was the easiest way to express that online at the time. <laughs> Ah, thank you for subscribing yourself, Lunar, too. Ah, you're awesome. Um, my, um, <laughs> my experience with Yaoi was entirely informed by my, at the, the, my weeaboo phase and my long stretch of internalized homophobia overlapped completely. Oh. And <laughs> that led to some issues with Yaoi, especially with, like, my favorite characters. The major ships of the fandoms being completely Yaoi based rather than like anything else did not help that fact. Mm. So it was not a good time for the little thumper. <laughs> yeah, and that is true because Yaoi is so popular, it can kind of take over fandoms for sure. And um, it still does. Yeah, and you end up it with like the, the fandom being just all about that. And I can recognize how that might be frustrating. I and I think that like if we want to talk about it, I can re I can recognize how part of it can be considered um, toxic when it gets out of hand, especially when it comes like for me. What I'm thinking of is, is specifically when it, we're talking about like real life people. Mm, oh yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Oh life. no, that can um, happen <laughs> so often, and uh, it's usually young younger women who cannot separate uh, reality from fiction. Yeah. Or do not have that a good grasp on it yet. Unfortunately. I mean, that's one of those things that's like, you know, people say this awful thing, and in some ways it's rooted in just a tiny bit of truth, and I think that's a good example of that. So, yeah, for sure. Okay, well, we can definitely um, come back to that and... Um, oh, symbols. What symbol did you use, Thumper? I'm still learning how to use this bot. I just did the like op like the heart symbol, but I did like eight of them, and oh, it wasn't it was it wasn't even like eight hearts. It was just like the little ah oh, god, the little less than symbol with like eight threes. Oh. So it wasn't even that long. Wow! But it's just like no. That thing is sensitive. I might have to turn off. It hates me. I might have it hates to, me. to change it so that like subscribers and regulars are not subject to those filters. Because I'm really just trying to get rid of the bots. Like legit, that's all I'm really trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep finding every single thing that it hates. You're my troubleshooter. It, I, You're my troubleshooter. <laughs> I, I, I get. I am your troubleshooter by getting shot by the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, um, I needed a second. Okay. Um, what, what was I going to do? Oh yeah, I was going to go into part two. I was going to go into part two Hell of my yeah. gender journey. Okay. So really, when I realized that there was something about me that was not quite cis female was not until I started working, okay? So once I got into the workforce, this was the first time in my life where I actually had situations where I had to tell people what to do and they had to listen to me. And I learned very quickly that certain people really fucking hate that. <laughs> Coming from someone like me. Uh, yeah. So yep. this, this is a repeated thing that I would have. And it was mostly with males and it was sometimes with females. So I don't want to make it sound like it's just, you know, boys are stupid and evil. Because that's not all of it. That's just a lot of it. Um, <laughs> but here's what would happen, right? So let me just going to stand up for a second so y'all can kind of get the full picture. This is, this is what I look like, right? Like this is, okay, we'll do a profile. I, I, you can't really see it too well on the camera because I'm super close to it, but whatever. You get the idea, okay? I have, there, there are just certain people in this world that this, this, this I'm gesturing to myself is exactly what they want, okay? Let's be real, that's just how it is. And so I would keep having these experiences, usually with men, where they would like look at me and, and kind of take in who I was physically and then they would have to start working with me and talking to me and socializing with me and they did not get what they expected and they reacted very poorly <laughs> to that. And so I ended up in these, these situations where it became very obvious to me that the way that they were kind of working around it, for, for the ones that didn't like just freak the hell out and um, just treat me really badly, what they ended up really doing was kind of they stopped treating me like a woman. 
they started treating me like I was some kind of like, you know, sometimes um, women will get like, oh, you're just one of the boys, right? Or something like that. That's what I yep. started getting. Like I started getting that, but only in certain situations. And it really only seemed to affect people that I was ever in situations where I had to tell them what to do. And it also would happen um, with people that I have a sneaking suspicion were attracted to me, right? So it typically wouldn't happen with somebody that didn't have an attraction to me. And it wouldn't happen with somebody who I never had to like tell them to do something. Um, so I'll, I'll go into this. I, I can't remember if I've ever talked about this on stream before, but I've actually had a very traumatic experience with, um, with my work environment where I almost got fired basically because of this. So I had a boss that um, was very bad at being a boss and, uh, and he basically withheld, so I was working at a call center. He withheld my stats from me, like he withheld my customer surveys from me in particular. Um, and just basically piled them up for six months until he had enough negative ones to put me on a performance plan. And for those of you guys that don't work in the corporate world, I'll explain what that means. Uh, when you get put on a performance plan, you basically get told you have to do A, B, C, D. If you fuck up, you get fired. Okay, like in writing. You know, it's, it's an HR thing to protect the company, right? They do it this way. So I got put on a performance plan and I lost my shit in the meeting with him and his boss where they put me on this performance plan because I was like, why didn't you tell me about this sooner? These surveys are, are from forever ago. There was always also this thing with my reopen request that he didn't like where he was like, you have more reopen requests than anybody else. And I was like, I take twice as many cases as anybody else. No shit. I have more reopen requests. What's the percentage? Well, I don't know. I didn't calculate the percentage. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> right so we have this like this like freak out screaming meeting at each other and um and uh i i get past the performance plan right and i don't get fired thank god but there was a while there like he like he literally went after me he went after me in a way that i could not have predicted and i could not have understood and um and there was nothing i could do about it and it was incredibly traumatic right so um any of you guys that think your bosses are your friends you really don't know they can do all kinds of crazy stuff to you if they want to they're just choosing not to right um because he got away with it there was there was no repercussion from from him for doing that to me and um and he was definitely one of the people that was very much like oh you know you're one of the guys ha ha you know you know what anime is and you've played everquest and that means you know you're not really a girl like he doesn't he doesn't like say it like that but it's like all over the conversation you know what i mean like i'm, yeah. I'm sure y'all have experienced similar things yeah. being um nerdy females right <laughs> yes and this really yep. stuck with me right like after this experience it really stuck with me and it was kind of like huh maybe this is why certain people just really can't stand me maybe this is part of it and so i started paying attention right and i started asking questions to people and trying to dig into this and i really do believe that for these people that react to me this way a lot of it has to do with them not being able to conceptualize me as a woman Right. Like they just can't they just can't believe that there's a woman out there that is both smart, that they think is pretty, that is confident, that is good at her job. That's like all of these things. Right. Like they just can't conceptualize it. And so I end up getting treated kind of like like this third gender. Right. Now, I don't conceptualize myself that way. I would prefer that we live in a world where the box that women fit into is much larger, you know, but the truth is, and I've become much happier since I realized this and started behaving this way. The truth is that for a lot of people, they can't see me the way that they see other women. And, and that's just how it is. So to all of those people, like, and this is what gets me so mad also online. It's another little soapbox thing. It gets me so mad when I see things like there's only two genders, da, 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 da. You have to pick one. And it's like, but nobody thinks that. Like, nobody actually thinks that. Their behavior is not that. So, <laughs> you know. Um, Society needs to pick one then, damn it. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, I tried, and nobody's interested in what my version of a woman is. So, <laughs> clearly, like, what y'all are telling people to do is not what you actually think. Um, well, is, I mean, isn't that just 
society. I general. mean, it is. It is yeah. in a way, you know, like, and it's so freaking frustrating. It's so frustrating. And I have definitely had thoughts before, like, well, gosh, if I could have just been born a man, how much easier would my life have been? And the truth is so much, like so much, not just because of patriarchy, but because I can't fit into any of these women boxes. Yeah, I just can't. Um, so I've had that thought like so many times. And, uh, and luckily role play has always been there for me <laughs> so that I can, you know, actually play some of these things out and, uh, and, and I don't have a problem playing male characters, right? Like it's totally fine for me. I have no issues. Um, you know, I, I, it feels very per perfectly natural for me to do that. And, and I love doing it. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's been my gender journey and kind of where I feel like I am now with all of that. Karen, you got to name something Augustine. Okay, I will. Lunar, do you have a preference? You can see at the bottom of the, the image of the stream what different pinatas I have in this garden. If you, if you see a certain kind of one that you want named Augustine, speak up. I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll just pick a random one. So yeah, that's, that's my gender story um, and kind of where I am now. I don't know. Give me 10 years. Maybe I'll own it and straight up say, like, I am non-binary. But right now, I am focused on, like, what I can do for those in my life to understand that the women box should be bigger. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The it's women so box is a weird also, box. Like, why are there boxes? Why? Exactly. <laughs> why? It's so stupid. But, but it's also say why are there boxes and not have it come across as um, like I don't want to sit there because I know that that is an argument within the trans community that when people say that gender is a construct that what it is doing is it's not trans affirming. Yeah, and I get that, and so I get like that. that. That like thin, but really solid line that you gotta like walk because I'm like, why are there boxes? But also like, I understand that if you wanna put yourself in a box, you can choose to put yourself in a box. But like, why are there boxes? <laughs> I mean, I have the same thought, right? And I don't want anyone to feel like my opinion on gender and my experiences with gender invalidates their experiences or their opinion, because that's not what I'm here to do. Like, yes, I would love to live in a post-gender world, but we're not there yet. Like, we're not there yet, and I don't think we're going to get there in my lifetime. So for now, for those that, that want to, you know, experience um their gender as basically living as a trans person as a binary trans person that's valid like because we're just not there yet you know so if that's what makes you happy and that's what affir is affirming for you um i think that's fine it's not affirming for me unfortunately <laughs> you know <laughs> yes conceptualize it as like a country metaphor almost like why can't we live in an open border society? And the fact is that people are not ready for the idea of open That's, borders. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same would idea. It be a very, I think it's like, instead of like society construct in that countries are constructs in that that is an identity that can be very important for people. However, when we wall things off and we make judgments and negative assumptions based on these things, then it becomes a negative Problem. experience for a lot of people mm -hmm. but if we have an open border society where you can absolutely say oh no i am 100 percent belgian i love being belgian belgia five ever that's totally cool but it's not like okay Italia fan somebody can't some somebody can't do like their backpacking through europe trip through belgium that kind of thing yes yes that would be my con my, my take on gender is a concept. Or like or like that you can't move like you can move from Belgium to, you know, Switzerland. It's fine. Cool. Yeah. Live in Switzerland for a little while. Live somewhere else for a little while. That's fine too. Yeah. And, and I right. think and I think that people that move and then want to own their new country that they live in like that's valid. So yeah, I think that's a that's a very very similar situation that people experience with nationality. Okay, I go ahead, Landon. Oh, I was going to say, like, if we're going to continue this extended metaphor, because I love an extended metaphor. <laughs> um, I just wish it was more like, you know, the the EU, where you can just, like, you know, pick up and move from France to Spain, instead of being like, 
what I feel like right now it is, is America and Mexico and Canada, where it's like these closed, defined things that it just is a lot of work to cross those borders. It is, yeah. Can I um, please, can I please move to America? It's like, I'm sorry, you have to fill out all this paperwork and prove that you really want to be American. And then yeah. they're like, are you sure you want to be American? Like, actually, oh my God. pull down your pants in order to prove that you're a man kind of thing, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's so dumb. <laughs> it, that's what I, I feel like currently, culturally, how we look at gender is like, you know, you have to prove it. It's like, just let people be. Yeah. Let them be. <laughs> I like 100% Captain Marvel. I have nothing to prove to you. Yes, oh, I love God. that. Carol Danvers. <laughs> anyway, um, Thumper, do you want to tell us about your story? Or you want me to go next? Uh, I have no preferences one way or the other, which I think is going to be kind of a theme going forward for me. <laughs> well, why don't we just do Thumper's our guest? So why don't we just do Thumper next in the in the middle, Perfect. right? And then Landon, you can go next for after that for your gender story. That makes sense to me. Okay. Go that ahead, works Thumper. for me. Uh, so I pretty much have a lot of my experience with gender is informed by being assigned female at birth, having ADHD be undiagnosed for my entire childhood, and then being bisexual. Like, those are going to be the three tenets that are going to build this particular story. Because as a kid... Oh, I was a handful. I was smart enough to avoid developing any of the study habits that would lead me to be successful later on when I could no longer just bullshit my way through life. But I also was so dramatic. And I, I will correct that. It is That is not a past tense thing. <laughs> I continue to be one of the most dramatic Why? people. Why are you calling me out like this, Thumper? I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just happened to experience emotions uh, like keyed up to 11, no matter what they are, kind of. Like, it's just a lot. It's a lot all the time. And therefore, I sort of fit the bill of just being a dramatic female for a long time. And people were fine with that. They could sort of expect that from me. But then, once I hit the teens, and now the expectation of being a female shifted away from just being, like, little kid yells a lot. It suddenly became, like, oh, you have to perform all of these physical attributes in order to be seen as womanly and be praised by others. And, oh, that was not what I was about in life. Mm-mm, mm-mm, that was not me. So, I... Almost immediately as soon as middle school hit, which was right when my parents got divorced and I moved back to the States from Canada, it was right when I was starting middle school, so great time for Thumper. Mm. Um, oh, things were not good. So I was, I basically just lived in the same outfits that I do now more than 10 years later, which is just jeans and graphic tees, and I kind of just rode the line of the only outward sign of me being female was gonna be the hair that I couldn't like that just I just like it kind of long and the tits which decided to grow in and I was like mm, okay great <laughs> this, this is gonna be a problem and lo and behold it was because uh, yeah catcalling was fun and catcalling I think was gonna be one of the immediate things that made me go mmm I don't actually want to be seen as female ever. <laughs> so it was deeper this for you. Bad. It wasn't just like, this is annoying. Um, you know, it's disrupting my day. It was more like, uh, also like, oh my God, they're seeing me as a woman. Ew. It was like, just like, I'm sorry, what? Because I also had the kind of experience of being seen as one of the boys, sort of, in that I had more success in making friends with guys than some of my friends did. Um, and then... It was just like, mm, mm, this is actually not in fact good. And then I finally figured out that I was uh, not precisely straight. <laughs> that took a, that, that was a long journey of a lot of internalized homophobia. Yeah. Oh, it was a bad time. And by the time I was figuring out that out, I was also like, wait, wait, what if I'm just, what if I'm just not a girl and I like girls? But uh, no, I also like, <laughs> it was... A very confusing muddling time, and this then was around the teenage 
area where I had basically to change my name because myself and my best friend, who I met first day of high school, both had the same name. Ah, uh, very can't common have that. name. <laughs> it's a very common name in the state I live in, which is New York. Uh, and so we had me with the name, my best friend with the name, and my other best friend had a very similar name to that. Uh. Like, 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 think of it as Katie, Katie, and Kathy. Oh, uh, yes. So we called ourselves uh, K cubed because it it does start with a K. It was it, we were K cubed because we were the three Ks. Yep. Uh, uh, because we can't really be KKK. No. So we were so we were we were K cubed. <laughs> um, so I got the nickname of Thumper, which as if you. Uh, watched Bambi, you know that Thumper is not, in fact, a girl. No. It, he's a very cute boy. And I was just like, huh. And then I was just kind of like, you know, I'm just gonna be Thumper. And it turns out that people on both sides of my family have had the nickname Thumper. Uh, my grandmother on my dad's side and an aunt on my mom's side have both had the nickname Thumper in their ba in their uh, their lives. So it's weirdly oh, a dual-sided ancestral nickname. It's a Which is weird. Uh, but the beyond that, it's just like online. I frequently have been "quote unquote" clocked as all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, where I've gotten, I've gotten she very rarely, actually, unless I like specifically define myself as such. I'll usually get a uh, they, which I prefer. Because it's like, yes, you don't know me. Thank you. But occasionally, <laughs> Do not perceive get, me. <laughs> I will occasionally get clocked as a dude, and I'm very curious about when that happens. Like, what, <clears throat> what, what signaled this to you? Because I want to know. I want to know what signaled this identity to you. I find that um, so interesting because I feel like, um, from what I know of you, we were we you know, rolled in very similar online spaces. And most of those online spaces are very female heavy, right? So you tend to have she, her assumed and less otherwise. So I find that so interesting. I think it, with the revolution of more people going non-binary and the push for the they as the standard pronoun until somebody tells you otherwise, mm -hmm. it's gotten better. Yeah. But also Thumper not being necessarily a female character it's not an immediate like ah yes this is a woman <laughs> woms <laughs> yeah so yeah my my gender is just a uh, mm, question mark. Nah. It's, it sounds like <laughs> it's a non-committal noise it sounds like an i would rather not have one thank you <laughs> <laughs> Like, like I just look at the I look at the red asterisk next to the half you, where you have to put something down, and I just go. Ah. Oh, Thumper! I don't know if you're watching the chat, but um, Jane is in love with your voice. I think I think she's slowly just falling in love with with yeah. you. Um, <laughs> and uh, and she just said that you know my messing up because I'm still switching right because you just recently asked for the the they and so she pops out sometimes still. Um, and I, cause I, and That's I messed right. up at the very beginning and apparently that was the first time that, uh, the Jane knew <laughs> you are not a dude. <laughs> that so is actually, that is the biggest compliment I could possibly be paid because like I was gifted this contralto voice by the gods of puberty that decided to hit me like a freaking train. So I got to use it somehow. That's so right. like. I want to confuse people with this voice, and that 100% validates everything about me. Thank you. You know, when you got that deep voice like that, um, it almost sounds to me like, oh, you should do audiobooks, you know, something like that. <laughs> I love audiobooks. I have the problem of enunciation with audiobooks because uh, I struggle with enunciation a lot, and then it just gets worse. That's fair. Yep. That's but, great. like, if I could get paid to do it, I gotta secure <laughs> <Someone> that bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, Landon, it's yeah, your turn. Yeah, Landon, your turn. Give us your gender story. Well, I have a similar story to both of you, yet different in certain key points. So, um, I am a fat woman, and I have always been fat, through growing up. Uh, I was always bigger. I'm six foot. 
six foot one sometimes and <laughs> sometimes when I'm wearing heels, I don't just grow an inch some days. Sorry. Mom. Well, you know, if you, if you, if you do your height when you wake up in the morning versus when you go to bed, you will actually get slightly different things because of what gravity does during the day. So that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> gravity is so, all. Um, I am taller than, and was taller than most of the boys in my school, especially through elementary and middle school. I was bigger. Um, and I enjoyed I, I didn't know that I was going to say that I enjoyed boy things. I was considered a tomboy, but I don't think I was considered a tomboy because I genuinely liked boy things. Um, my self-esteem because of my body image and who I and how I physically present did not feel female. It didn't feel pretty enough to be a woman. I didn't feel pretty enough to be a woman because I looked at what women were and they weren't me. This and is breaking so my I, heart to hear that because Landon, no. I think you're really pretty. <laughs> no, and like that's an incredibly just, relatable like, experience. And that's the younger version of me, right? That's the that's the um, probably until midway through high school, and then I was able to find RPing, and and then was able to like figure out that gender sort of thing because I was playing multiple genders. I was being able to find the difference between men and women, and then I was also exposed to characters that were women who were different than the woman image that was shown to us. Um, so I was able to have that kind of like insight and experience. And as I have grown more confident and as I've gotten older, I have embraced what being a woman means. And I have also sat there and was like, oh, I, I can be fat and be beautiful. And I can wear makeup just because I don't look like the makeup magazines. I can still wear makeup and I can still wear heels, even though I'm six feet tall. And I can still wear cute skirts, even though they're really short on me. <laughs> and I can, <laughs> I can still do all of these things that I didn't think that younger version of me didn't think I could do because I wasn't what I was being told a woman was. Mm. Um, and so I have, I've kind of, instead of going the way that you went, Karen, with your, with your third gender, I, I kind of doubled down on the woman thing. And I was, I, because I explored that area and because I'm also loud and confident. So like, I was one of the boys, I was tomboyish and all of that. So I didn't ever feel comfortable with that. I finally was able to embrace that and be like, oh, I could do all of this and explore this version of me. Um, and that's kind of the journey that I have been taking. However, because of all of this navigating, um, I recognize several things that there is no definition of what a woman is, <laughs> that there is certainly no definition of what a man is. And why do we have boxes? <laughs> why do we? Because uh, if we didn't have them, then that would also have solved my problems, you know? <laughs> I would have just existed as I was. And maybe I would have then liked to Yu-Gi-Oh! And also liked, you know, Polly Pocket or or whatever it was that I was like had to choose over at that age, middle school version of me. Mm -hmm. um, and that I could I could embrace who I was rather than who society, the pressures that I thought society were telling me I needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then hopefully would have been who I am now for a lot longer. <laughs> Well, I think that's kind of the that's that's kind of like the through the through line of all of our stories, right? Like, um, you know, if we hadn't if we hadn't had some of these experiences, we could have just been ourselves, you know, as kids, yeah. which I don't think any of us really got to be. It sounds like yeah. gets to be themselves as a kid. Nobody. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe maybe cis boys that are that really like sports. <laughs> but even then, like, but, but then we get. That's when we get toxic masculinity. Yes, and that's no good either. Because you have the boys that are who like sports, but they're to being told what a man looks like and should be. Yeah. That it's going towards the exact opposite. It's it's sitting there and being like, oh, I need to double down on these behaviors because that's what a man is. Yeah. And then that indicts us into our society, and and this can get very like a sexism soapbox that I want to save for another day, but <laughs> very good that still exists there. It exists for everybody. I mean, like, and that's, I think the tough part is that when people sit there and say, well, it's just gender, gender is everything. And mm -hmm. we, whether we want it to be or not, it affects everything. And that's part of the privilege that if you're cis, you don't understand. Yeah, I think so. Um, and, and that sexism was a big formational part of, I think all of our gender experiences is that there's a punishment 
involved. Yeah, there's a punishment yeah. for deviation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, there's and even a punishment for compliance sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and that's the worst part. Is there And is there ever truly compliance? When you think of what a woman is, who we are told culturally what a woman is, it is literally just a bunch of contradictions. And when you are told what a man is, that is also literally just a bunch of contradictions. Yep. Like there is no, per you cannot be the idealistic per version of that, of that standard because it doesn't yep. exist. Yep. Mochi has some really um, wonderful comments that I want to read. Um, and I want to say thank you so much, um, Mochi, for uh, for being here and, and saying that this is what you had wanted to hear. This is one of those, this is a very personal stream for me. So I really, really appreciate it. And, um, and I think it's probably pretty personal for Landon and Thumper too. Um, but what Mochi says is being online, when I got to be the gender I want, it feels empowering that I can change online. Yeah. And I think that for me, that's, that's like a huge part, right? Like being able to come online and be like, well, today I'm going to be this. And nobody really ever has anything bad to say about it, you know? And that's something that you just can't have in, like, I guess, meat space, <laughs> you know? You can't have that in meat space because there's all these expectations that you can never live up to. <laughs> I never decided to meet expectations, and I highly recommend that. I love not having standards set for me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I never really w worried about it either until like potentially getting fired was in my face, you know, and it was literally like, oh, wow, yeah. I'm being fired because someone doesn't like me. I cannot believe this is happening. It's legit happening. <laughs> you know? It's, yeah, it's no. Hard. It's hard to sit there and be like, okay, but this is also something that doesn't have a roadmap for me to change. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily even something that I should change. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't want to change who you are and the perception that you give off as part of your identity to please what other people's expectations are. Yep. And to be clear- I also realized that- Oh, sorry, go ahead, Thumper. I realized that we haven't talked as much about, um, like Landon, you did touch on this. Karen and I, we, we sort of avoided this topic uh, about like, um, I think current standards of gender and role playing versus like when we were kids, uh, since we're both, you know, we're, none of us are exactly 18 anymore. No. Like, <laughs> like our, our experiences where the standards of gender and things online have changed significantly since we were yeah. younger. Mm -hmm. And now we can, mm -hmm. yeah. we both can play other things. And I think we frequently do play things different than what we did as children's. Absolutely. Yes. Like I play women now and I, I don't have to be worried about the perception of female characters online anymore. That's true. So that that is something to point out. And I'm sure we'll get more into that when we start to sort of move into some of the other parts of this discussion for sure. Um, I wanted to clarify something about my story that I realized I didn't explicitly say. Just to be clear, I did not change myself to get out of being oh, fired. Um, and I never absolutely. actually said that. So when I got the performance plan, you know, those performance plans list, like you have to do this, 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 this. All I did was follow exactly what the performance plan said to the letter. And then I didn't get fired because I was never doing this stuff that I was supposedly doing on purpose anyway. I was just never being told. You know, it's kind of like if somebody tells you it's your job to do the dishes, but nobody ever shows you how to load a dishwasher or what buttons to press to turn it on. And then you always have dirty dishes. Well, no shit. No one ever told you what buttons to press. Duh. You know, so the second <laughs> I was given instructions and said, you have to do this, this and this. And then the person that was trying to fire me also had to go double check and see if I did this, this and this and update me every single month instead of waiting six months. You know, all of a sudden I didn't have these problems anymore. Amazing how that that works right <laughs> so i didn't want anyone to come away thinking that i, I changed anything i didn't <laughs> that whole no, experience sounds I, absolutely unhinged it was batshit i mean it was awful and i absolutely and i yeah and i didn't think that you did but i think that this is a common enough occurrence that there are people who are yeah i think people would that, that there, there are some exactly people that would have reacted to that by by changing their attitude and um yeah absolutely and i could have done that and it probably would have worked too yeah. Well, like, yeah. And that's the other thing, too, is if you, it was in your boss's hands and then you just appeased what your boss wanted from you rather than even what the like play by play is for your work, that would have worked. Yep. And there are people who do that option because that seems like the only option out or yeah. they don't or they don't feel comfortable enough with who they are and where they are at or or anything like that. That that is an important aspect of this conversation to to recognize is that 
that is also what's shoving us in boxes. Mm -hmm. That is also that we, we have, that it's not only hard to break free of your boxes, but you are actively being put into one. Mm -hmm. And we're putting ourselves in these boxes too somewhat because, you know, because we don't realize that there are other options because we've not been shown other options. Um, And then very quickly, a part of my story, I also wanted to touch on um, that when you come out as queer and, and embrace that, the LGBTQ identity, it becomes a lot easier to see the different alternatives, lifestyles that are hidden from you when you are not queer or when you are when you are not out. So that I was then able to see the full spectrum of what a woman is. Um, I was introduced to butch women, butch women. I was introduced to women who were alternative, who who I did more identify with as far as being able to have like bright colored hair, but also badass attitudes. Like um, being able to have that that other the opportunity to find a community that was so accepting of other ideas of what it means to be a woman um, that it also starts making you question your identity. And this is something that I know um, a lot of bisexual people go through, especially uh, that they're like, oh, I'm attracted to both genders. What is gender anyway? Mood. <laughs> the biggest how many retweet. People, how many, <laughs> I know so many people that are like, I'm bi. And then the next year be like, and go by they then pronouns, please. <laughs> yep. And it's just, it's just, I just want to like shout that out as part of my journey and part of how I got there was that I really did embrace this, this, my queerness and was able to then explore a world that was was hidden from me Mm -hmm. it's very interlinked right once you start seeing seeing this from one angle it kind of all the other angles become revealed very quickly which is people who aren't in the community and don't have the education and understanding behind the idea of gender and sexuality confuse the two Mm -hmm. Uh, because it does seem wrapped up in the same community um, even though it's not, even though yeah. they're two separate things, but because there is this like natural pathway from, oh, this is your sexuality and what does that mean? And then you have to start doing the research to discover that for yourself. Um, even if it's just literally acknowledging your sexuality, you have to then realize that there's an alternative to normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and that in itself is steps towards something that is not normal. It yep. continues to be alternative. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Do we want to try to wrap this up into like RP stuff and what that means for us as far as like writing characters and gender within our RPs? Yeah, for sure. So I would say for me that um, realizing the freedom of being able to role play a gender that I didn't necessarily feel like I was. Um, is really what makes it all okay, right? And role plays that mo- that time to experiment that is incredibly safe for me, right? Because nobody nobody sees it except my role play partners, and um, and they're all very chill and cool, right? <laughs> Unlike maybe some people that you might know in real life who, for all of their trying, um, you know, maybe don't really know quite what to say or do in regards to some of this stuff. Uh, whereas online, I feel like people are a lot more accepting of those things and a lot more like um, careful about how they interact with those things compared to in real life. So yeah, that's that's like that's like my real thoughts on it. It feels like it's like a it's like a safe place for gender yeah. nonconformity. And I it's which is I think something that we will we have acknowledged and will continue to acknowledge which is very different than it was necessarily a few years ago yeah um, especially when playing women in yeah. our characters uh that it wasn't safe to play a woman <laughs> sometimes it felt that way at least um that oh be playing a woman online felt almost as it felt like you were being as criticized as you were when you were a woman yep yep um, Thumper, I know you've had some experiences with this, so why don't you why don't you kind of go first and segueing to like maybe ten or fifteen years ago? What was it like when role playing women in in online spaces? So, I like when I was a kid, I tended to role play as women because it was just like girls is the only thing that I sort of conceptually understood as, as that was what surrounded me at the time. But I gen I almost exclusively played women who are a lot more feminine 
than myself and acted a lot more like that because I thought that was what everybody else wanted. Mm. And I was not wrong. <laughs> but this was when I was like 12-ish at the time. This would be... Uh, God, I'm old. I can't... I don't, I don't know. This would be like... Uh, the. The middle 2000s? Yeah, that would be like 2006-ish or somewhere around there, right? Somewhere around there, yeah. So, very different environment from now. When I moved past, like, role-playing on the boards on Neopets and Gaia Online, <laughs> I got into Tumblr roleplay, and through Omegle, which I don't know if anybody finds roleplay partners through there anymore, but I sure do. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Omega was the shit for a while, okay? Like, it was the place. <clears throat> that was the place to be. I've met so many friends through there. Love it. Anyway, um, and that was when I was into primarily, and it still shames me to say that this was the show that did it for me, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> Landon Sherlock. won't judge. Landon won't judge you for that, but I will slightly. Okay. <laughs> I, I accept this. I accept this. I know my sins. I uh, don't so... judge you at all for that. Uh, <laughs> so John Locke, in particular, was the first gay ship that I ever He's got into, fantastic. and is single-handedly responsible for me being like for me coming to terms with being bisexual. Because of that. Well, I love that for you. I'm sorry it had to be John Locke, but I guess it has to be something for everybody. But like <laughs> from there, I got into that. I from there, I got into Destiel. I got into Sabriel. I got into Zar. I got into all these other gay ships. All the stereotypes, right? Uh, yeah. Um, and <laughs> therefore, the only things that I was playing at that point was men, because I saw how female characters were treated. Which was um, almost like, regardless of what they were like or did, they were almost exclusively assumed to be self-inserts. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which was yeah. a problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, that and... was largely my experience, too, is like what I would see. And this is when I started getting into Yaoi and really role-playing in those spaces instead, was because that's what I overwhelmingly started to feel like. Everyone thinks my character is a self-insert, even though I had started to realize that self-inserts wasn't really what I wanted to do, and I was doing my damnedest to move away from that. But I felt like no one would let me. No matter what I did, people thought I was like a self-insert, and it was very hard to find partners. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> and then not even, like, not even just the self-insert thing, though, but, like, I know that writing, especially RP writing, is for you and your partner. However, when you're part of a group dynamic, you do like the call outs. You do like the, hey, good job, and we appreciate this character and everything like that. And women characters, the first part of my RP life, didn't get that. Nope. Didn't get acknowledgement from a wider crowd. People didn't read them. Um, people didn't pay attention, and people certainly didn't like them. And that was really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I experienced, too. And I, I, I don't know if in a lot of, like, you know, spaces that are similar to what we used to be role-playing in, if some of that maybe still doesn't happen. I don't think it does in the way that it used to. But I know that since we basically all role-play mostly in groups now, that we really don't experience that anymore. So thank God for group role-plays, right? Love <laughs> the groups. Yes, um, because we do not have to worry about that sort of thing. But um, when you're when you're out there just basically trying to look for one on one partners and you're really just doing a bunch of ships in that regard, like really nobody wants women characters. They just don't. They just don't want to do that. You know, they don't even you. It's to the point where like at least when I was coming along in role playing, like you saw all the time, you know, um, male and male ships. Right. But you never saw women and women ships. Like, you might yeah, see, you like, still... smatterings of fan fiction for that, but you never saw it in roleplay. Very often. It's better, but you still don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's a wider issue. That's not an RP issue. That's a media issue. Yep. Um, women on women uh, relationships are typically um, very heavily indulged in the male gaze and also yep. um, not as often around. Yep, absolutely. It's um, sad. <laughs> it's like we can't even pass the damn Bechdel test. How are we going to supposed to freaking have a fleshed out proper relationship? 
it blows my mind that there are some movies that are about lesbian characters that still don't pass like the Bechdel test. And I feel like that the Bechdel That's test, like horrifying. it's so it's so cheesy and low bar, right? It doesn't even really mean anything. Like if you do pass it, like okay, so what? But the fact that so many don't pass it, it blows my mind. Well, it's just yeah. I mean, it just shows how lo- how low the bar is, yeah, right? Like, or like the uh, movie or not, it just shows that it's like oh, here is the bare minimum, and you didn't meet it. Yeah, I think the um, worst test of all to me is the sexy lamp test. Uh, that one, when people fail that, makes me incredibly sad. What's the sexy lamp test? It's like if a female character could be replaced with a sexy yes. lamp and have, oh, and yes. that has absolutely no change to the plot, you've written yes. a bad thing. Yeah, well, it happens all the time. All the exactly. time, all the time. And a lot of times they'll pretend like these female characters aren't side characters, but they obviously are side characters, right? What but they try to pretend. I- Oh, woman! Oh, mm, uh, we can't go on my Wonder Woman rant, but that's... <laughs> well, you know what? I would, I would love to do, I would love to do a whole episode, and I know Landon, you would too, um, about sexism, yes. um, in in role play, and uh, and maybe that's the place for your Wonder Woman rant. I think it would be, it would be a please. great, that would be a great episode I'm for just, that. I am just yes, please. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> to focus back on RPing. Um, yeah, you Jane know, just she- said that Cherry doesn't pass the sexy lamp test. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine because whatever. But <laughs> it's okay. So it's okay. Right, her. We love we love you, but it's yeah. It's more of a mass media problem than it is necessarily an RP problem. And a part of me wonders, like this is just pure sk- speculation, and I could be wrong. But I also know that when we were looking back at um, 2000 you know, 15 Tumblr RP sort of stuff. Mm, good times for a me. Lot of, a lot of what people were looking for, especially if they did have female characters, was to have a, for lack of a better word, dominant, stronger uh, partner to ship with as far as character goes. And yep. in media, those are represented by men. Yep. So the it wasn't even like that it was just the fact that women were considered self inserts. It was also that these women were dimes a dozen all trying to vie for the attention of people who could write stronger partners. Oh, don't I know it? Because when I was uh, willing to play the semi, all of a sudden I was very popular, right? Like yes. everybody wanted to talk to me. Um, um, you know, everybody wanted to be my friend. Everyone wanted to role play with me. Yeah, and- when I played the strong masculine men, Oh man, I had ladies all over me. It yeah, was it was much. a wild time for sixteen <laughs> year old me. And I think that dynamic still kind of exists. However, I think that it's far less. I think that like the dominant, submissive sort of characters still exist, and people who write submissive characters looking for dominant characters to ship with. However, the dominant characters are now more accepting of gender. It's not just men. Ca- mm-hmm. or male characters. I yeah. think there's a little bit of truth to that. At least what I see. From what I see with in like yes. these role play hub servers where people post, you know, that type of ad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's true. And uh I know sometimes it can be very difficult because it's like sometimes I would like to, especially as someone who who realized and recognized that, oh, these strong characters get attention. I would like to not just have to write the strong characters. I would like yeah. to also write the, for lack of a better word, weaker characters. Like, I want to do something um, different sometimes, too, you yeah, know? Yeah, like, I would like, as much as I love playing the Joker, I'd love to play a Harley at some point or something like that. Exactly. Um, and not from, you know, personal experience or anything. But yeah, <laughs> and, and trying to find that dynamic that fits, and that's, it becomes very hard because then it's like all of a sudden you realize that it's not even your writing that people like it's or like even you as a partner or things like that. It's like sometimes at that point in time, at those points in time, it felt like I was just fitting a need. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I had to stop for a while. And I said, I'm not doing this type of character. And I didn't for a few years um, because that's what it started to feel like. It started to feel like this is all you want me for. Like you actually do not care about my writing. You do not care about my friendship. You care about this dynamic and that's, that's all you care about. Yep. And that's, it's hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but that's why I love groups is because I think that they're more evened out. Yeah, I think a little bit. Yeah, um, sure. Do you get anything out of writing um, like male characters specifically though? Not even talking about like back 
back when it was really popular and really hard to write female characters. But now you write male characters. Yeah. Is there something that you particularly get from it that you enjoy or or do you um, just do it? You're like, oh, gender. I play a multitude of genders and this just happens to fit this. Well, there's a little bit. It's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, right? Because there's certain characters that I've been writing for so long and, and mostly because I've been writing them with like you guys in our group, right? That I just, just like this is a character I play in particular and I really like them. Their gender is not relevant, right? But there is definitely something that I, I get from playing a male character where it's this like that that really that does satisfy me in a way that female characters don't um because it's it's a place where it feels very safe there's nobody out there that's going to be like oh well your interests or the fact that you um you know don't wear any makeup or or things like that like that that is like not in my head anymore you know, because that's another thing, like, what y'all see actually on here that I do on my videos, this is the most makeup I ever freaking wear. And it's only because it looks really good on the camera. In reality, like, in, like, when I go to work and things, like, I don't, I don't do, I don't even put on this mascara that I put on for you guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's, like, so pointless to me. It's just, it has nothing to do with me. And, um, so when I play a male character, it, it's, it's nice to have a moment where those sorts of thoughts are not in my mind where I, I I don't think like oh am I is this is people are people having this reaction to me because I'm out here with like my nails done but no makeup and that's confusing them you know <laughs> like there's just none of the I don't have to think about any of that because nobody thinks about that for guys nobody thinks about any of that for guys so I just don't it's it's nice and it does do that for me um Thumper the same question for you is there is there a particular thing that you get out of playing um, a male character? And I guess a female character for you, since you are more meh as far as gender goes. Yeah, uh, for a long time, um, especially once I started playing guys um, in my late teens, I typically gravitated towards the ones that didn't perform gender exactly in a straightforward, like, yes, this is a exactly very masculine man. Like, I played... A male stripper version of Balthazar from Supernatural for a couple years, um, and so he wasn't even technically a, like he was angel adjacent. So like the the version of gender that I was playing was definitely not like like he would be definitely clocked as like weird um, <laughs> of like some kind of acronym. That's what you are over there. Um, and so for a long time, I played very much people who looked very stereotypical like yes this is this is what we want a man to look like like Shoris he's like over six feet tall he's built like a freaking brick shit house he has this chisel jawline he looks like peak masculine and then he's a soft marshmallow wants to hug everybody softest boy <laughs> uh so playing male characters and playing female characters like joy hourglass figure short pretty also a complete fucking basket case. Um, I played characters that definitely <laughs> looked like they were going to be a certain way and then completely did not act like that because I wanted to sort of echo the fact that I personally like fairly feminine, expect, except I don't dress that way or act that way or any of that. So like our current version where I have a fairly masculine man and a fairly feminine woman is actually a deviation for me. I'm like, <laughs> I, I've stepped away from my like non-conformational things. And now I'm like, this is the real rebellion right now. He's Try fitting in the boxes. It feels so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing it Look at me. I'm performing. I watch to do it. <laughs> Well, I think no so, matter what you do in roleplay, you kind of get bored with doing the same thing over and over. Like, no oh, matter absolutely. what you do, right? So, um, I think that's very natural. Yeah, so, like, the what I get out of playing these characters is more the chance to... Exp because I have a crazy empathy problem, uh, is that I get to experience the stories that I didn't in my personal life. Like, severe toxic masculinity. I didn't yeah. really get that. But I get to experience it when I'm this great big blocky guy that did not perform the masculinity correctly. Mm -mm. <clears throat> so that would be what I get out of it is that I get to tell the stories that I didn't get. Mm -hmm. I, 
I I get that from playing male characters as well. Um, typically, uh, it depends on. I know all of them. Um, <laughs> I'm able. I was like, Todd was a good one. No, he was he was problematic too. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, that's the thing, too, is that they're unaware. Like, I think that that's what I like about it, too, is they're uninhibited by their space that they take up, which I think is something that is very male. Mm -hmm. um, and something that, as a woman, I haven't been able to experience. I am aware, because of how the world treats me, that I take up space. Um, and as a man, you are not... Unless there is something that is specifically clued you into that, you are typically not clued into that, as this is male, I should say. Yeah. Um, and I think also, um, let's be clear, we understand that for a lot of these male things that we're talking about, we do know that um, if a guy is a, a person of color, right, non-white, then yeah. um, they're more likely it's to have had different. experiences where they've I been clued into some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, so, so yeah, just caveats everywhere. Just imagine caveats everywhere as we're saying these things. <laughs> a lot of what I'm talking about is just cis het white man. <laughs> sometimes, like, sometimes that's yeah. really all we're talking about. Because <laughs> it gets complicated. It all gets... the other kinds of men. Yeah. But, yes, um, in this particular, like, but even then, I mean, there is a certain privilege with being male, even a male of yes. color. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. It, and and I have explored that as well as sitting there and being like, okay, here is here is a character that experiences racism, but is also a man and a and a strong, toxic man at that. So <laughs> are we talking about Magnus? I am talking about. Oh Magnus. my gosh, I loved him. It. He was great. <laughs> oh Magnus. Um, and and, and sitting there and being like, okay, how does this man exist? How how does that go? And there's a freeing sort of feeling to be able to live through a even if it's a fictional world with that sort of thing uh with that sort of freedom to not have to worry about navigating not having to worry about oh is my character coming off too strong as a female is she like can she actually exist in this world at the at the power position that she is in and this is not a particular character but in general i don't have to worry about all of that stuff mm -hmm. with that because no one's going to question it mm-hmm um, and then with women, it's really fun to be able to spin, uh, stereotypes and, and things on their head for me, like Cassandra, especially she goes from this weak, innocent naivety to someone who is in complete dominance of everything that she exists and being able to take her through that journey is really therapeutic. Um, and something that, like, as a woman, I don't get to control that. <laughs> I try, but I don't get to. So being able to actually have a place where I can have that journey and it be safe and also be something that I control is really fun. Yeah, unfortunately, we haven't figured out how to make other people stop traumatizing us. Um, and we just yeah. have to deal with it when it happens, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. I'm going to figure out my knife gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's all that's all like super valid. Right. Um, and we love we love a good character growth story. So, you know, we love to see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. And it's just I mean, but that's part of like, unfortunately, women a lot of the times because of how well, again, sorry, soapbox, but it's so intertwined in me that I'm just like, here's a soapbox of sexism. Um, it's so intertwined with how we are trained to walk through this world that we aren't able to be a catalyst of our own personal growth. Mm -hmm. um, and we aren't able to uh, have a say in, in how the world treats us. And because of that, like being able to sit there and be like, okay, well, he's a character that there's a woman that I do get to control all of that. Yep, because <laughs> it's, it's just writing, so I get to do it all. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's sucks yeah she goes through trauma like don't get me wrong it's not it's not an easy growth growth but it, it certainly it. is the one that i get to control and not one that yeah and she gets to have that moment too where like she will eventually rise from the ashes and women are not guaranteed that in this world no absolutely not for sure so <sighs> Mochi, I would be, I'm going to go back to this. This is a comment that Mochi made a while ago, but um, yes. I would be really curious about that, that poem. Um, you know, if we could maybe find it and, and read it, if you know the name of it and the author, if you could share that Mochi, yeah. um, that would be I would awesome. Love to read. I would love to read a poem out loud. Yeah, it was, it's, she, uh, what they're saying is, uh, recently read a poem about a strong masculine character wanting a different type of sub and to experiment not being so strong. So hopefully it's um, safe for work. Uh, if it is, I would love to read it because that sounds really, really interesting to me. 
And if it's not safe for work, then we'll put it on Karen's Patreon. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> or we'll put it in the Discord server or something. Okay, that's true. No, I'm just Patreon trying to... Patreon exclusives. Just... Gender song and not safe for work. <laughs> oh, really? trying to hype up your Patreon. That's what I'm doing, Karen. Thank you. Like, I appreciate it. Enough. You, Gotta you know, get that dollar. You know, I resist it mostly. I mean, I do it some, obviously, but um, but I don't really like it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we will do it for you. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk just a little bit also about while we're talking about like different genders and things like that. Um, something that I wanted to to mention that I have experienced in role play is when there is when when sometimes you have situations where you are pressured to play a different gender than what you want to play um how do i how do i explain this uh we've had situations where we have told people like you're playing too many of the same character why don't you switch it up and play a different gender and we find out why they never write that gender (laughs) Mm, (laughs) Um, situations (laughs) and um and i do think i do think that if you when it comes to role playing and playing a different gender than yourself there is a learning curve right like i didn't pop out you know, being able to write men, the my first foray into role playing Yaoi was awful. I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know how men thought. Didn't know how men worked. Didn't know any of that stuff. I know a lot more about it now. Um, so I wanted to just mention that as well. I do want people to feel encouraged to role play different genders than themselves. I think that's that's healthy and that's valuable. But um, but understand you might not do it right at first <laughs> if uh, if you're very very solid in your own gender. Um, cause we have yeah. seen that before. And I, and I think that, um, practice is important. Yes. And what you will discover is, okay. What you will discover is if you are, especially if you are assigned male at birth playing male characters and you start playing women characters, you will discover how women characters get treated. Uh-huh. And sometimes you don't really like it, what you find out. Uh, And then if you were assigned female at birth and uh, have only played female characters, you will discover how shitty it's been to have your female characters been treated. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Because all of a sudden, simply switching gender changes everything. But I think because realistically we most writers write what they know especially when they start out so it is it is very rare i think for writers to go and write an opposite gender right off the block nothing it doesn't happen it has obviously um but i think that for the most part that is kind of what we have seen in patterns is that it's male it's uh you know men playing men characters and women playing women characters and then being asked to uh come outside of that box is a very eye-opening experience that allows you to write a better character in general no matter the gender Mm -hmm. but there's a little bit of a learning curve at first absolutely at first it doesn't work (laughs) at first you're like why is no one paying attention to my woman character and it's like because no one reads women characters yeah yep and it's also because you might be you know breasting boobily down the stairs (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as yeah. the meme goes <laughs> please i mean i do think or... of that every time i descend stairs <laughs> <laughs> i think of that and it's because i am <laughs> i identify it with breasting boobily down the stairs <laughs> they're not wrong like that's the infuriating part about it it's just that the focus is on the wrong thing <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not a positive experience it's an ow 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 shit yeah and it's like oh i wore the wrong bra and now my tits hurt or it's like oh my god i'm in such a rush i wish i could slow down but ah, i really have to run (laughs) or i I hope i don't trip because i can't see the steps i just like i'm literally holding my tits to me and i'm just like oh man you do like this move right like i don't know if you're watching the stream or just the chat but like if you can see it like you do this move as you run right (laughs) Yep, yeah. with the arms in. Yeah. And I just hope that, that like, a man does not see me, because if he does, there's one thing that he's going to do, and he's going to look at me. And I hate that. <laughs> Don't look at me. I used to feel that way until um, until I got married, and now I live with men, right? And they can get over it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, right. sorry. I wanted to say that aside because I, I feel like that's no. important to this conversation. Because I do, I do hope that this stream kind of inspires some people as well to to step outside the box and experience what it's like playing another gender. Because you might you might have a, a wonderful revelation about yourself. Um, but I don't want anyone to feel like it's it, that it's easy or that it's instant. No, yeah, it is not. Um, what is I next? Also think, I also think that we should discuss because we've been talking about. Um, assigned female characters and assigned male characters at birth. Yes. I think we should talk about trans characters and NB characters. Yes, I would love within, to. Um, within RP because uh, they're rare as fuck. Yeah, where are they? Um, <laughs> and when they are and most of the time, I'm not going to say all of the time because I have met some fantastic non-binary and trans characters that have been written so well but a lot of the time um, they're not written well. <laughs> unfortunately and they're either sexualized or um they are thinking about them being trans <laughs> yeah it's like a stereo yep. they almost sound like a stereotype instead of a character right there's yeah. also a which like is not a bad thing but people are writing through their experiences they use rp to do that so we have had a lot of people who are trans themselves play trans characters as a self-insert um, which is totally fine. They're well-rounded characters. Self-inserts are valid. But it is also difficult sometimes to have well-developed plots with those characters because those characters are held so close to the chest and so protected because someone is living out their dream life. Mm-hmm. And it can be uh, rough because it's like we're we're very dramatic, right? We're very like um, chaos balls to the walls a little bit in our role absolutely. play. So then it's like we want to get them involved because they're good writers, but then they can't get involved because their feelings would get hurt and, and we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So they kind of end up, end up just playing these peripheral characters for the whole time. And, um, yeah, and I don't think anyone really enjoys that experience, them included. Yeah, and I think that that's part of it too, is that because um, people, are, people think trans characters exist maybe in a certain world or a certain aspect of RP. So you see them a lot in town RPs or, or realistic fiction RPs or anything like that. And a lot harder to find them in things like sci-fi RPs where you think that like, God, if we're thousands of years in the future and technology is this far advanced, you think our ideas on gender would be like way better. <laughs> like, in some ways it may be because of that, because you can no longer have those storylines that may be affecting them personally or like myself personally. It's like Absolutely. because it's sort of like a a fantasy post gender society or where we have such advanced medical stuff where it no longer really matters and you can just completely have the body that you want. It no longer feels like an authentic trans story. It just happened to be like you essentially had the equivalent of a birth defect. Yeah, which that's is a good point. Totally, which is totally valid, and I see that and I hear it. But I also want to see kind of like how I ask for queer stories to not be about queer coming out. Yeah. I want to see trans characters whose story arcs are not about just being trans. Where trans is an aspect of their personality rather than the entirety of it. 100%. Um, like, yeah. occasionally... We and will I have hobbies. Absolutely. You're a full grown, like a full developed human being. And yes, trans is, being trans is incredibly important. However, you, you think you do like other things. <laughs> um, <laughs> like you know, friends and writing or who knows. Um, well, I think, I think I a want... big, oh, sorry, go ahead. I thought you were, oh, I thought I, you were done with I, the thought, but go ahead. I hope we get to a point where we start seeing characters like that who are playing fully who are fully developed and not just playing that particular piece i think playing that particular piece and playing that role is also extremely important and i don't want to like shit on it it is and if that's what you want to do and that's what you want to write awesome great but i would also like to see like trans characters that are just integrated into the world yeah i think and, my and I think there's a couple of things with that, right? So, first of all, we have no examples in media, really. I mean, you have to go looking for, even if you're really into, like, you know, LGBTQ, you know, acronym fiction, right? And you read all of that stuff. It's still, trans is, like, the least represented of the acronym. Um, and I do think it's getting better, but I think that's part of it, right? If there's no examples, then role players, I think certain, some role players really struggle if there's no main examples that they can pull on, right? And then the other thing with that is I do think currently in our world, being trans is 
incredibly traumatic, unfortunately. Like, I, I, I don't really hear of a lot of trans people that, you know, that transitioned and everything was fine and it was wonderful. Like, okay, maybe like really rich people, right? That, that um, can pay for all of the surgeries and everything they want and all of the therapy that they want. Uh, you know, and, and it's not, when they were young. yeah, yeah. And, it, and they were able to do that when they were young because they were supported, you know, by their parents or whatever. And, uh, and that's wonderful for those people, but I, I don't think that's the norm. I do think, unfortunately, it's often a fight and it's often traumatic. And so until, I, I think the unfortunate truth is until we get more people like in real life having that experience, we can't find it in fiction because ultimately the, our fiction is a reflection of our reality. Absolutely. So, yeah, I want to get to that point, too. Um, I think that our society has to grow for us to get to that point. Yeah, and I'm not sitting there and being like, it should be changed tomorrow, but I would, <laughs> I would, it would be... Wave it would our be magic great. wand, right? And it would, yeah, Say it, it would should be changed nice to, tomorrow. <laughs> I think it would be nice to get to a point where people who also aren't trans or LGBTQ members can write trans characters. Like, and I, and I think that there's, like, this... There's not a tabooness, but it's the same thing where like it took a big, huge explosion for people to write queer characters. Yep. For straight people to write queer characters, and I'm hoping that that happens to trans characters as well, so that people are like, "Oh, this is an avenue of real people, yeah. and we can we can represent that in our media too." I feel like it's Made almost inevitable, or- right? Like it's almost inevitable. Yes. Um, like, why wouldn't it happen for trans people the way it's happened for um, gay and lesbian people, right? My main obstacle to playing trans characters and non-binary characters is that I don't want to have to deal with eight different interactions of, like, Absolutely. freaking yep. trans 101 type questions. I don't want to deal with that. You, and you know that's all. what people will do. And you know that's what people yeah. will do. So... And, and I mean, in this, we can tie this back to the to our, our racism and our race um, discussions, too, because we had that conversation and mentioned scenarios where people, like, want to write out certain racist tropes with characters of color yeah. um and, that <laughs> and they get very offended when they when are, they get told no <laughs> yeah and, are, and especially people who are writers of colors yeah of color playing characters of color don't want to have to continue to re-traumatize themselves mm-hmm. so i understand completely why trans people and, and non-binary people would not want to um continue to have to have that <laughs> i Ten thousand percent understand. Yep. Um, and it would be nice if, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a wish. Like right? maybe it's I'll, wish I'll, for the I'll add a character at some point, and I will say absolutely nothing about it, and then it will just very casually come into conversation at some point. And everyone's gonna go what? And be like, yep, I'm not taking I, any you know questions what? on you it. Could. I am not going to lie. I would love that. I would love if I got through the all the way through a bio of a character as a mod reviewing an application and in the last section where it says anything need to know, you put, oh, by the way, he, she, they are trans. <laughs> and then they are trans as fuck and I'll accept no questions on this. <laughs> and it's just, oh, by the way, their story isn't about that or this isn't about that. Like, I would love that. Be like, mm-hmm. cool, awesome, let's go. <laughs> Yeah, like if it wasn't a big deal, you know, because we definitely have worlds where it doesn't have to be that way, you know, where that yeah. doesn't have to be a big part of the character. It's up to them. It's true. I mean, and this is, no. and, and there's a huge reason that I that I, I do this, and I'm, I don't know if it's really heavily noticed or not, but I very purposefully do not on character applications have you write the character's pronouns or gender. Like if it's mm-hmm. important, you'll put it in the bio, right? That's yeah. how I feel. Um, and if it's not important, then you won't, <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. I think when you write a, when you write out a bio, you kind of have to, at some point, use some pronouns. Exactly. Well, you yeah, end up doing it anyway. They, and then at that point, it's like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mochi has a comment. This story took place in a kind of futuristic society. The author said it wasn't apparent because they transitioned earlier on. I personally feel you can't fit into a box. Yeah, like I think stories like that are are great, you know, where um, they transitioned early. Like I think of a a real life example. Uh, Nikki Tutorials is a great example of that. She was on YouTube 
for a freaking like decade or something like that and yeah, nobody no knew. knew nobody knew she was a trans woman nobody knew she was a trans woman until some jerk off literally threatened her with outing her right and so then she had to publicly make a video about guess what i'm trans guys and like that was like the, i feel like that's like the only video she ever talked about it and then she just straight up moved on and went right back to makeup <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> which was great <laughs> yeah another character that i could think of would be from questionable content which is a really long-running web comic uh the character of claire is dating the main is dating the main guy and she's trans mm. and it's very cool and he was very respectful about it where he's just like yep they have sex because they're dating no i'm not going to tell you anything about her body because it's none of your fucking business yep yeah very respectful yep <clears throat> i like that it's I would like to see more of it. I think that as far as gender goes, we, we need that representation. And I implore people to, to if they have the space and capacity, to study it. To see if they're, they have a character that could be that. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be trans or non-binary. And, um, you know, speaking of someone and acknowledging the fact that I don't have one yet. Um, but I think that that is something, an important discussion that should be talked about. Yeah, and I think... Um... You know, selfishly, you know, if this kind of helps anybody that's kind of struggling with this thought, uh, selfishly, if we if we make things better and representation better for trans people, guess what? Everything gets better for everybody, right? Because yeah. now you don't have to worry about the boxes either, right? If things get better for trans people, we all have to worry about the boxes less, which is which would be wonderful for for everybody. Yeah, and and if not for you, then for any kids you might have or nieces or nephews that you might have one day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep, the nibblings. <laughs> I love that word. Ever since I learned that word, nibblings. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, yeah. So that is what we have down. Unless we want to go into sexism, but it sounds like we're going to make our own episode on that one. I think, well, let's lead into it, right? Like, I do want to have a whole episode on that, but we it looks like we probably have about 10 minutes or so before we would get to the article. Um, so we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, I, I have role played primarily in like very female dominated spaces, whether the characters were actually mostly female or not. Most of the players were female, right? And even the ones that weren't, right? Like the men would be, okay, they'd be mostly trans men, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and, you know, or if they weren't, they would be like gay, right? So basically what I'm saying is there weren't a lot of, uh, cishet dudes. <laughs> <laughs> around in a lot of the spaces that I've been in. And despite that, I feel like we still repeat all of these same gender problems. Even when the men aren't around to push them on us, we still freaking repeat them. Um, you know, in, in our in the way that we uh, kind of lessen the value of female characters, in the way that we have specific assumptions about females playing female characters, um, and, uh, and that's been a constant, it's gotten better, it's gotten a lot better, but that's been everywhere that I've roleplayed, I've experienced some level of that. Like the soapboxing that I started with where people are like, ah, oh, Fujoshis are all just, um, straight women. It's not true. You just think that because you're all 15 right now, so of course you're whatever people assume you are. And by the time you're 34 like me, you will not all be cis straight women. Sorry to tell I you. Like, I, so, sorry to break it to you, but 50% of you are going to be real gay. Yeah, probably. The, the other, the other, some 25% of that other part is going to be like partially gay. <laughs> or like, or like non-binary, or they're going to come out as yeah. a trans man or, you know, or, or, or like it goes on and on and on. Um. <laughs> like the, the, issue of, the issue of fetishization and the issue of demographic, those are two different problems. Yes. Two different problems. Yeah, Not the sure. same one. Mm -hmm. And it's really, I mean, yeah, it's also, it's really hard to sit there and go like, especially about this particular issue. And I know we're getting back to that, but the, I'm sorry, the fetishization of all of it, it, it was because there's lack of lack of it in our lives. It wasn't because we were like trying to be like trying to fetishize anything. It was more of like, oh, we want to see queer relationships and characters who care about each other love each other we want to see that and media is not letting us do it there's no example yeah 
<laughs> so yeah, of course we're gonna take the time to ship John and Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Because they're two men who, by the way, share a relationship that we, as a society, have been told men do not share. Um, and we see the queer-coded, because let's be honest, it is extremely queer-coded. <laughs> that that was straight up queer bait, like that whole show. <laughs> it was. <laughs> very and... queer bait. So, like, you uh, keep Polish fetishizing it and making it, like, appear out of nowhere, um... Because the writer set it up that way in mm -hmm. order to get more attention and to garner more people. Like, it was a joke within the show. Yep. yep. And so it, it, that's, like, a whole And then other they try to pretend that the fans were, for, were stupid for seeing it. I mean, that's, like, a whole... That's, like, a, a whole, whole thing. <laughs> that was a whole thing. Um, and, and, of course, there are, there are lines that are very difficult to like not cross like like i said i, I draw a line at, at real life people um yeah but like some people don't and that's mm -hmm. that can be i can understand why that would be like an ew feeling especially for those people um i'm thinking of like corpse and saikuno right now great friendship love it but there is a huge amount of people who are just like do you belong together and should love each other and it's like they can be friends you know right like dudes can be friends with each other so here's here's like, the thing here's the thing with that with like real person fic like that that um it, my under the way that i feel about it if you keep it to yourself it doesn't mean anything like post your stuff on ao3 all day long whatever but i do get a little frustrated with people like going into saikuno's stream and encouraging him there. Now, granted, for Corpse and Saikuno specifically, they they encourage it a lot. Okay, so like they kind of ask for it. But I I I wouldn't be surprised if a year from now they start to get frustrated with yes. the way certain fans treat them and talk to them. And I don't. And I, I wonder even if they realize because they're both of them are kind of young. Um, I wonder if they even realize what they're actually encouraging and what this is probably going to build up to. I don't exactly. know. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and the, uh, but it's like uh, what, what's the One Direction and guys? Is it Harry Lee and Harry? Oh, yes. Like the Larry Harry, Piffer, that, like, oh literally oh, destroyed also, their friendship. Yes. <laughs> to literally talk about Taylor Swift and Carly Kloss. That's another one that is oh. just like I'm like guys. Taylor Swift is not gay. Stop it. <laughs> people really, really want her to be, though, like, real bad. Uh, people, I mean, I would love it, personally, because my chances would just, like, blow up by, like, 1%. <laughs> but... <laughs> you would go from 0 to 0 0.01, Landon. Oh, my it would gosh. would be amazing. Like, I'd have a chance. But at the same time, like, if someone, and this is a queer thing, but if someone sits there and goes and tells you their labels, how rude of you to ignore that. Yeah, yeah that's the true. Whether person is straight gay trans queer anything how incredibly disrespectful is it for someone to sit there and be like oh i know you better than you know yourself and you're in the closet and how dare you be in the closet and not be a good queer representative when that person is not a queer representative yeah i kind of understand that i think it comes from like when you when you are a bit queer you can kind of recognize it yeah. in others and you've had experiences where you're like pretty sure they are and then like a year later they come out and you're like yeah i was right you know but that Which doesn't make it any less rude for to to like to like voice those guesses over and over and over no one should be shoving pulling or pushing anybody out of a closet that they don't want to be out of mm -hmm. and even building a closet that they might not be in. Yeah. And that's just, yeah, sorry to get on that soapbox again, but it's just, it's, it's a lot when, um, when there isn't that line drawn yeah. and respected. It's but kind of, it's it, kind of true, but you know what? That's what I really love about role play is that I can play whatever gender I want. Yeah. And I don't feel like anyone makes any sort of assumptions about what that means for me as a person. And this is yeah. one of the few spaces where that's true. And you also, as a person, have the opportunity to demand more. So if you want to see more queer representation because you're missing that queer representation in media and you want to see more queer representation, support artists that show queer shows, artists, anything that show queer representation. Mm -hmm. um, write queer representation. Continue to do your fan fictions. Absolutely. That's awesome. But yeah, yeah that was... That's gender for you. We just solved the whole problem. It's right weird. then and there. <laughs> All right, shall we get to the uh, the letter of the day? 
or the what's my call it the the article? article good news of the day yeah Thumper, good did you have did you word. have any more comments on anything that we said oh. um since you're a guest i want to give you the last word before we do the article let's see um Exploring what it means to be any kind of gender is going to be a difficult undertaking, but it is critical for, I think, everybody to examine both the factors that have contributed to your own gender identity and expression and whatnot, and how you interact with those same factors in your writing. Because introspectively look at gender and a character you will likely start to think about how you yourself relate to the different societal pressures such as your parents, religion, cultural background, race, sexuality, every single one of these possible factors that can contribute to your own experience and identity with it. I think that critically looking at your own experiences and that of others will lead to understanding people a lot more and potentially understanding yourself a lot more, even if your expression is like, it's like, nope, I'm a dude, and then you think about it for a bit, and you're like, no, I'm still a dude. It's like, even just <laughs> looking at it critically for just a hot second will be good for you in the same way that eating a bowl of broccoli is good for you. <laughs> your vitamins. Take your gender <laughs> vitamins, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think I think that that's absolutely right, and, and I do hope... That um, the people hear this episode and uh, and feel either either seen or inspired, you know, whichever whichever is appropriate for where you are in your Team life. Spy. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me. I'm gonna do this last. Come here, dragonfly. He's gonna fly back in his house. Never mind. We'll do that next episode. Okay. I was gonna turn him blue real quick, but we're not gonna do that. Okay. We can we can do the we can do the article now. Um, Landon, link us. I don't have it. Thumper. Has oh, it. that's right. Thumper has it. Thumper, link us. Link, link, link. Done. I, I had started. That's okay. No. You're good. Oh, all right. I'll we'll find it, it again. Oh, done. It's going to be in your history somewhere. So I can grab it if you don't. Ah, uh, uh, all right. Really Thank you so much for coming, Mochi. I'm so glad to have had Tortle. you here. Um, feeling Isn't both. That's one? wonderful. Turtle. It was like the the turtle. Yeah, it's, it, I'm, I'm posting the link. Oh, okay. It's I have turtles. to look. Tortles. Okay. Tortles. Tortles. I'm a biologist. I uh, I've done <laughs> a lot of classes about environmentalism, conservation, speciation, and pollution. I just like turtles, guys. They're really special and fr <laughs> good friends. And uh, the idea of there being more turtles in the world is always good. Oh, we love it. The last known. How do you say that? Swin Swinhose turtle. No, I think Swino is fine. Swino's? Okay. Swino's Swino turtle on Earth was alone until this female was found. Researchers hope for babies. Oh my babies. gosh. So this is a, a variety of turtle, right? Do you know something about this one? Can you tell us something about this one, Thumper? Or, or is this I one have you're not super familiar no, with? I, I researched plants uh, for my degree, and now I work with cells. So I'm afraid that I have no uh, no knowledge about this turtle, except that it looks very good. I mean, it's really cool turtle. So let's, let's read it's about really it. It's really big. Okay. On the brink of extinction. So I guess these guys were so on the brink of extinction that they literally thought there was just one left and it was this dude turtle, but they found him a girlfriend. Imagine if like you were the last person on earth, right? And, um, and somebody was like, hey, we found the one other person and they have a penis so you can have babies. Go have babies now. <laughs> And then you think Imagine. back to what you said when you said if you were the last guy on earth and you could just go, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta follow through now. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, conservationists involved in the confirmed DNA task capture was understandably ecstatic. So I guess they tested the DNA to make sure it was the same species. Um, this is really cool. I think turtles are really neat. Um, they are kind of mean though. So I had turtles, I had a couple turtles um, growing up and uh, and they were like, you know, little box turtles, right? So they were, uh, those you can keep as pets just fine. But um, but sometimes, you know, I live in a swamp for those of you guys that don't know. Sometimes the, like the big, like the, you know, big daddy snapping, snapping turtles. turtles. Yes. Sometimes oh, they'll like get assholes. in the, yes. And sometimes they'll get in the road 
and like they're not scared of cars like what's a car gonna do to them these these things are like this big right and they have shells so like they're gonna mess up your car you're not gonna mess them up um so they just sit there and you have to drive around them um and we've we've definitely had experiences where we had to drive around turtles and and one time we tried to help this turtle get off the road and it was not having it uh we ended up getting a laundry basket because that was as, as far away as we could feel still safe because like it would attack us if we approached <laughs> And we like used that to like push him off the road. And it took a lot of force. He was not having it. He wanted to sit in the middle of that dang road. <laughs> that's turtles, that's man. Adorable. <laughs> I don't have any turtles around me, but that's adorable. This type of turtle is apparently a giant soft shell turtle in um it Asia. Looks adorable. Like mm -hmm. it looks it looks like something I'd want to cuddle, but also be a little scared of. It kind of looks like a, a Pokemon, right? Like the way that its head is a little bit weird shaped. <clears throat> yeah, and it has like the swirls on. Like I know it's not swirls, but it looks like squir swirls on it. Yes, it looks like the little patterns on his face. These are always yeah. nice. These are always nice when they're able to when they're able to find um, another one and uh, and see if we can have more turtles in the world. All right. Yeah. So, given the shape of this face, this thing really isn't going to try to bite you. No, he would be nice. Nah. <laughs> He'd be pretty nice about it. It because they're a soft shell, they don't really have that crazy armor and giant snapping jaws to catch fish that would make it a danger to you like soft shell turtles would be. It they eat they eat like small fish, crabs, snails. Oh they're, yummy. They're chilling. <laughs> they, they just mostly just want to be left alone in their enormous maximum unit softness <laughs> do the soft shell turtles are they more um does he like swim then if he's soft shell yeah they're swimming they're swimmy boys yeah okay they're swimmy turtles that's what i thought okay well that was nice i liked that all right let's go back to the webcam Okay, so that's the end of our show. Um, thank you so much, guys, for coming to um, Interstage Window today. This was a very personal show for us. Um, but let's let's do outros. All right, so Thumper, since you're our guest, you can go first. Where can everybody find you? What would you like to promote today? Uh, you can find me on Tumblr at dedicateddeath.tumblr.com, where dedicated is spelled with dead at the beginning, because I just want to reinforce the fact that I am, in fact, deceased. Because <laughs> all of the puns are important. <laughs> yeah. And you can also find me on Discord at <laughs> Thumper hashtag 7201. I promise I don't bite, unless you ask me to. Oh! Do you, do you bite even if they ask you to, though? No. <laughs> False advertising. That's what that was. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Hilarious. Um, all right. <laughs> you got some applause, Thumper. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lunar. All right. Thank I you so all of it. Thank you so much, Thumper. Okay, Landon, where can where can the people find you? What would you like to promote today? You can find me on um, Instagram and TikTok. I guess those are the two today. And Twitter at land in Maine, L A N D I N, and then Maine like the state. Um, it's a pun too. Land That's about it. I, I post some fun things sometimes, and um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, what Landon was saying is she posts some fun things sometimes. It's a lot of fun. So Lunar clapped for you too, but it cut it cut off the Aww. little bit of an the little ending bit. Um, I'm gonna have to figure out how I can make those sounds go through the stream too, so that Discord can always hear them. All right. So where you guys can find me is uh, right here on Twitch. We do Interstage Window every Saturday at noon. That's our conversation stream where we go into a topic that is either related to role play or, you know, nerddom or things like that and uh, and talk about it a little bit deeper dive. Right. We also have artistic license, which is on Thursday, starting at 630. These are all East times are all Eastern. And um, and that's my variety stream where we do kind of whatever I want to do right now. We're playing Final Fantasy 10, which is my favorite Final Fantasy game and uh, has an absolutely excellent story so i do recommend you turn in for that as well on this coming up thursday uh also we have um a spare room which is my scripted show role play help like discrete you know segments of specific role play help topics on my youtube channel that goes up on wednesdays at 2 p.m i also have the tiktok 
the Twitter, you know, the things, if it says at it's Karen Terry on any of those socials, that's probably me. That's usually what, um, what I have there. And uh, all of this stuff you can find down in the about uh, of the Twitch channel. And that's all the places that you can find me. All right. Good. All right, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Um, everybody say goodbye. <laughs> thank you, Lunar. Bye, guys. Bye. Um don't forget to be awesome. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to make it a great day. Okay. Bye. See y'all next week.